Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Thrive Co-Living Communities YouTube podcast. I'm Mark Stein, Thrive founder and your podcast host. We're creating sustainable, inclusive, and multi-generational residential communities from repurposed big box stores or other unused buildings. By offering unique and ecological co-living options, our aim is to combat the epidemic of isolation, revitalize communities, and help others discover the many benefits of engaged community living. In this podcast series, join us as we discuss co-living and other aspects of our concept, in addition to bringing you interesting people who are doing cool things from around the world. Through this podcast, learn more about our concept and see how Thrive Co-Living Communities will bring together people from all walks of life. To find more about us, visit www.thrivecolivingcommunities.org. Thanks for watching and enjoy the podcast. Okay, so welcome back everybody to the Thrive Co-Living Communities YouTube podcast. Glad to have you here. And I wanna welcome my guest, Aaron Jacobson, and he is the manager of warranties and the installation team at Green Bean Battery. And you probably haven't heard of it, but you're going to get an earful today. Uh, and I'm a real enthusiast about it. Uh, and I'll, I'll share why as we go. So, Aaron, welcome. Glad to have you here. Thank you very much, Mark. Appreciate it. So talk a little bit. Give us an intro of what Green Beam Battery does sure. and, um, and how it's better. Sure. So um, Green Beam Battery uh, started in late 2016. Um, Tim Livingston was the former owner of the, co of the company, and he had the idea of being able to produce a reconditioned hybrid battery um, that would be more reliable than what some of the competition that was out there at that time. Um, and he started in North Carolina, um, and slowly in that very first year in 2017, he kind of grew into about three to four states and um, was doing upwards of 25 to 30 batteries a week in that first year. And then I joined the team in May of 2018. Um, and in 18, we all, we had about a 350% increase. We started doing 100 batteries a week, um, and it was just crazy the amount of you know how how fast it was rolling. Um, and and then it's been growing exponentially since that point as we kind of expanded in the other states. But the basic uh, part of Green Bean, um, so a customer has an issue with their hybrid vehicle. Um, and they go ahead and get it diagnosed. They find out they've got a problem with their hybrid battery and they give Green Bean a call. Um, and then we kind of will go over our process, um, let you know what we can and can't do. But basically we would set up an appointment to come out and replace your hybrid battery at your location. Um, if it's your house, it's your work, it doesn't really matter where it is. Um, and then once we've replaced the battery, we'll clear the codes, we'll test drive the vehicle, make sure it's good shape and it's running good. Um, and if so, then we collect the remainder of the payment, you know, through, um, our, our installers can take it, or you can call into our office and our sales team will be happy to take the, the, the payment. Um, we are open on Monday through Sunday. So we're open every day of the week. Um, our warranty team is only open Monday to Saturday, but, um, but we certainly, you know, help any kind of customers um, if they call in um, on our warranty team, we do have to, to get the diagnostics done and make sure it's a hybrid battery issue. But once they've verified that um, we have a lifetime warranty on our battery um, option and, um, customers have routinely, you know, given us five-star reviews for our service, our, our, our sales, and our, even our warranties. And that's really helped grow our business. It's one of the main reasons we've been growing so tremendously over the last, you know, three plus years. Um, probably most people, when they think of hybrids, uh, they think only of Priuses. Uh, sure. Pri, as I call them. Um, uh, do you do other batteries other than uh, Toyota Prius? Sure. Yeah, we do um, the Honda hybrids. Uh, we do the, the Tahoe, the Silverado, um, some of the GM uh, hybrids. Uh, we also do the, a, lo a lot of the Toyotas. So we do the Highlanders. Uh, we do the RAV4. Um, we do um, Camry hybrids um, and all the different models of Priuses for sure. Um, and there's a, the Nissan Altima hybrid we do. There are some differences between the, the hybrid batteries. Some of them are made with lithium and some of them are made nickel hydride. Currently, we are only doing nickel hydride um, hybrid batteries. Um, and, and that's been our bread and butter. But it's also where most of the, the vehicles that were made 
you know, that are older were made with that technology. So as, as we kind of grow forward, though, with the purchase of our LKQ having purchased green beam battery, we're going to be introducing even more um, Brett's. We're going to be doing, whether it's the Ford Escape or the Hyundai Sonata, all that stuff's coming down the, down the pipe here in the next, you know, little bit. Uh huh. Are by chance, are the batteries between uh, brands, uh, Ford Escape, are they the same basic battery? Can, are they interchangeable or are Toyota's Prius only good for Prius and are not good for Highlander, not good for Ford? Tell yep. us about they're, they're sure. So they're all different sizes. So they definitely are not interchangeable. Um, they are each, each battery that's made, um, may la- it. So like a, an 04 Prius will be the same as a five, six, seven, eight, and nine Prius. So you can use that battery for any of those year models, but once it changes the generation and they, they use a different battery, now you can't change it. So you can't swap it back over. Um, and that's the same for every manufacturer, every, you know, every part etc mm-hmm. and highlander is a different one than prius yep highlander's different camry's different um gm the tahoe's are different um and some some of it's not just the the cell technology that are in them may be the same but the camry one takes 32 the the prius takes 28 uh the tahoe takes 40 um, but it's the other components around it because there's relays, voltage sensors, um, there are wiring harnesses and a whole bunch of other things that are inside that battery that those components communicate with the powertrain control module under the hood. And the powertrain control module has to have specific information that it's looking for from those sensors and those relays. And so it, you cannot, you don't want to mix it because it's not going to give the right information to those computers, basically. Right. Uh, tell us what's involved with re do you call them repurposing how, how do we you call it reconditioning we we call it reconditioning okay. so what we do when we get a um a bat so we go out and do an install and we put a battery in a customer's car we're going to take that old battery back and when we get it back to our warehouse we're going to completely disassemble it and and the cells are kind of one of the major components of it we're going to take the cells out of it and send them through our reconditioning process, which what we're gonna do is take those cells and we're gonna bring them back to 100% capacity. Um, that's the first test. And once we bring them back to 100%, 30% of them, 20% of them, they're gonna fail that test and they're gonna get discarded. When we discard those cells, they go back to a recycler. So that's one of, been one of the main missions from us from the beginning is to you know, be environmentally sound as a company and to try to make sure we repurpose stuff in the, in the right place. But when, we, when the 80% that pass, they go to a stage two testing where we're going to put them under a heavy load, basically more than what the car actually does, um, and, and attempt to see them fail. Uh, I mean, any ones that fail that test, they go into the recycler, you know, the recycling bin. Um, and then the ones that pass are what we use to put inside you know, a hybrid battery. So all those cells that pass, they're grouped together appropriately and then put inside another battery. Um, and then there'll be a one final test on the battery to send it for sale, but all the rest of the components that are in the battery. So we would nickel coat the bus bars to prevent corrosion. Um, we go ahead and take the wiring harnesses and run a continuity test on them. We take the voltage sensors and the ECUs and we check the continuity inside the, the computer itself, looking for burn marks and we're, we're trying to find failure points so that that can lower, you know, the amount of bad batteries that we're going to end up reconditioning and sending back out there. Obviously we want the, with that lifetime warranty, especially it's, it's in our best interest to, to produce the best quality battery that we can. Mm-hmm. And when you say lifetime uh, is what, what do you mean? Is it the lifetime sure. of the vehicle, the person? So, <laughs> yeah. So it's the lifetime of the vehicle for the current owner. Okay, so the current owner owns the car, they have a lifetime warranty. So if they have a problem with the battery, that is a fault of the battery. Um, Maybe the the cell cell takes a dump or it has a problem and it throws the check engine light on and it has a code, then they would call us up and then we would schedule a replacement battery form free of charge. It's kind of how it works. It seems like there was one situation where it even is transferable to another owner. That is correct. So you can. So on our website, there is under the warranty tab, there's a transfer program. So if you sell that car with the lifetime warranty, um, then the the new buyer can go on our website, go sign the contract. It's no charge. uh, But once they sign it, it gives them what steps they need to follow to execute the the warranty transfer. And 
basically it's they're going to send us a bunch of information uh some of it from the original owner and some of it from themselves and then we'll once we've reviewed those details as long as they've initiated that process within seven days and signed the contract within seven days of the bill of sale date then we can usually approve that warranty transfer and send them back a confirmation letter you know letting them know that the transfer has been approved nice and uh at this point maybe it's a good a uh, good time for me to let the audience know uh, how I came to know about you. Guys. Sure, uh, absolutely. So, so I have a, I have three Priuses or pre I not really sure the what proper way to say it. Um, and the oldest one is an 04. And I was preparing and actually still will pass that vehicle to my grandson who just turned 16. And it's been hit on every side. Um, so it's the perfect car, first car for a 16 year old to continue to demolish on the, on the exterior. Sure. Um, so uh, here I, we planned for this for several years and then the battery goes out. Mm -hmm. So I, I first check with the dealer and I think it's, I want to say between five and $6,000 to have a dealer Toyota dealer replace a hybrid battery. Is that ballpark? It's, uh, um, it used to be that much um, back when we first started, but the latest prices that I've seen have been probably closer to $3,000 uh, to okay. replace it, which we're still significantly lower than that. Um, but having said that, any customer that wants to spend three or $5,000 on an older car and put a new battery in it, I will never tell you their battery is worse than ours. Their battery is definitely better. There is no doubt because it's all got brand new parts. Um, ours is all reconditioned, so it's got some older parts, but the benefits that we offer with the lifetime warranty and the cost savings, um, a lot of customers are very happy to take that, you know, take that option. Yep. And yours is 15, I think it was 1500 for the Prius battery. It's yeah, it's for, I think, for. yeah, it might be a little different now. It's 1449 uh, for the three-year warranty plus tax, and then it's 1479 for the lifetime warranty plus tax. Okay. And that's for your 04 Prius. Okay. And so... I have over 200,000 miles on this Prius mm -hmm. and the thought of spending three to five was killing me. Mm -hmm. um, so the rest of the story is that I remember you guys because uh, I, I have a digital marketing company and we build websites and I had a client who wanted to go into the business of green bean battery. So I was building his website. He I think he had some health problems and ended up pulling the plug, no pun intended, um, mm -hmm. on the website. But he was using your website as a guide um, for some of his language. So mm -hmm. he he was telling me he was using your website, Green Bean Battery. <laughs> so I remembered it when uh, when the time came. So, sure. Um, and it was a wonderful experience. I think they, it was either scheduled for a Sunday or maybe we reschedule it from a Sunday. But originally it was a Sunday offer of installation. Mm -hmm. And just like you said, the mechanic uh, came in. I want to say it was 30, 45 minutes. Yeah. Uh, he took it, took it out for a test drive and it was back good as new. And my grandson's going to get that. Uh, he's now 16. He's now going to get it um, uh, in a few weeks uh, over Thanksgiving. So uh, that is awesome. And with the Thrive Project, mm -hmm. uh, I, we really have wanted to have you guys on the show uh, because of the, the uh, compatibility and the focus on environmental sustainability. Uh, sure. Talk a little bit about that. And how sustainability and environmental consciousness uh, help bring about this business. So, yeah, when Tim started, um, part of the, he, he was a, a mechanic, you know, or he owned two auto repair shops. And so he was getting hybrid batteries from other, um, other shops or other places. And he, they were having just lots of failures. So, I mean, it was a lot of really high, it was almost hundred percent warranty rate that he was having on the ones that he bought. And so he, he wanted something that, um, that he could be a good steward for the environment, you know, and provide it 
um, a, a product uh, that would appeal to you know people that are in the green market, um, but that, that would provide a reconditioned battery at a good price and then offer the customer service that that's needed in order to you know grow the company, which has basically been our model kind of from the beginning is 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 forward facing with the customers and just making sure we're doing our best to provide the the level of customer service. As far as the sustainability, though, we have he looked in really early on trying to find, and we struggled to find, but we looked for people that were willing to take those cells that were bad. So we literally kept those cells for almost a year to a year and a half before we found somebody that would take them off our hands and recycle them, you know, rather than just throw them into a dump or throw them into some place where it could be more. Now the, the interior of these cells is not dangerous. It's not, um, there's not a, uh, a chemical, you know, reaction or anything that you have to worry about as far as the, the danger. Lithium is dangerous and it's a little bit completely different animal, but the nickel hydride cells that we use, that we, that we do with the Toyotas and the, the GMs and the Hondas, um, they are not, um, they, we didn't have that same restriction. We just did not want to, to be contributing to, you know, the environment in that way or, or sending it more to dumps. We wanted to try to find a purpose to recycling these, these cells. And, and eventually we found that we found a company that did that. And we've been able to have that relationship with that recycler ever since. So they, they take that off our hands. Are you all over the country now? We are, we're, yeah, we're yeah. in continental United States. Uh, we still have a couple States that we don't do service in, which is Montana, Idaho, North Dakota, um, some of, just a couple right up in that region, but every other state we have the ability to do an install in just about every other state. How do you, how many installers do you have? Ballpark? We have close to fifty. Okay. But yeah, close to fifty, kind of geographically across the company, or across the United States. Okay. And do you bring them in to train them, uh, or do you do it online? How do you how do you? Yeah. So it, it's it's interesting. So because we have people that um, have have some mechanic backgrounds, you know, that work for us. We have other people that um, have a driving background uh, that work for us. Maybe they've worked for Time Warner Cable or they've been an Uber driver or um, stuff. But the, to be an installer for Green Bean is kind of different than, than pretty much any, a lot of other jobs that are out there. In, in many ways, the majority of what they do is drive. So, so they, have, they have days that can be eight, nine hours of driving and then three hours of installing. So, you know, they're, they're, um, it takes a different type of person, you know, that, that can, that is okay doing that, all that driving and stuff. So our training that we do, um, we have phone conversations with them. We have Zoom conversations with them. And then they literally will go with an installer and shadow a couple installs. And okay. so, the, and at those shadow installs, um, they will get introduced to it, number one, and like what it is and how it works. And then usually on the second or third one, they'll do it themselves with somebody supervising and providing the right tools. And then from there, we go through a couple more training steps to make sure they can, you know, be a good part of our team. Mm -hmm. uh, the installer I had was exactly the kind of guy you would expect, you know, young guy on the uh, cool side, you know. And, yep. And uh, uh, I would imagine that with all that driving, uh, are a significant percentage of them uh, older people who, you know, like to drive, sort of, sort of semi-retired, and then younger, younger people. Yeah, we have a good mix. Um, we have a good mix of people we, um, that are on the older side and then on the younger side. But we also have some people that are um, in the, you know, kind of in that midlife that actually do have families at home and do have. Uh, kids and um, they, it's probably not as many as some of the other, but we have a really wide range of, of, of installers at different stages of their, their career. What we've kind of found though, is the, they have to kind of love that drive, right? Um, out of all the things that they do, <laughs> they, they have to be, they have to kind of love being out on the car and being by themselves for, for X period of time. If they don't love it, they don't tend to be with us very long. So that's yeah. the, the rest of it is all the, we can work with them. They can get better at certain things and, and we can coach them and, you know, and work with them. But if they don't like the driving, <laughs> it's just not a job for them. Yeah. What about the male female mix? Mostly yep. males. Yep. We do. We, we've had some app. We struggle as a company right now, just getting applications um, from female, from female, you know, 
guests that want to do this. Um, and one, this is not, I don't mean this to, to say anything, but the, the batteries themselves do weigh between 80 and 120 pounds. Um, and, um, and every candidate, regardless of whether they're male or female, though, that is one of the first questions that we ask is, can you handle this? Because it, and not only do you have to pick these batteries up necessarily from the back of your car, or sometimes maybe from the ground, but you have to maneuver them into the car, into the right spot. So it, it's not as simple as just saying, oh, I can pick it up. You know, it's, it's got to, you got to bend over and you have to, you know, make sure that it goes in there without damaging the customer's car. That's the other yeah. key, right? So you can't, you can't nick anything on the way going in. So, it's a but luggable, all that's part of it. A luggable yep. thing. And, and I did see it. It's, yeah. it's not, <laughs> it's not conci con uh, concise. It's, it's no. big and long. Um, yeah. Um, and some of them, like the one that you had, the Prius, um, battery is on the smaller side compared to all the others. So mm -hmm. all the others tend to be larger. Um, the Highlander is like having three of those batteries. Um, and then the, the Camry is like having two of those batteries. So it's, it, it's definitely interesting for sure. And are, do you ever have to send two people out? I mean, three times that size with a Highlander. Yeah. That's Not cool. usually, um, although the guys have that option. We do give um, in their pay structure, the, the larger batteries and more heavy batteries, there is um, an extra pay so that they can bring somebody with them um, and, and get some help to put them in. Uh, the guys that are more veteran have been with us for a longer period of time, have figured out if they bring a, a folding table or something like that, they can just slide it onto the table and then slide it into the car on a cardboard and slide it into place. So they figured out their tricks to not have to, you know, to do that. So it is possible without it, but you have to have that little bit of ingenuity to, yeah. to, to do it. Do you have any favorite stories of client situations? Sure. sure. I, I, I have, um, I have a couple, uh, but I'll have you early, probably just probably a year and a half ago. So I had a customer um, call up and the customer wanted to buy a battery from us. Um, they were, they were quoted um, at the dealership, six thousand um, dollars for, and this is a, a Gen Two Prius. So there was six thousand dollars because the dealership wanted to charge them for a battery and for two hub assemblies. So for their uh, for the wheels, so their wheel bearings or hub assemblies. Um, and so when, which is very odd, that's not normal with a hybrid battery that you have two hub assemblies that go bad at the same time. So the customer talked to me, he said it didn't start. He said that it, it stalled while he was driving. Um, and so he ended up getting it towed down to the dealership. And so I said, can you do me a favor before we sell you this, this battery, would you mind just sending me, you know, the picture of the codes? Um, Cause he was asking me, am I sure that the battery would solve the problem? And I said, I can't assure him of that without kind of seeing what codes, you know, that he had on from the diagnostics. So he sent over the codes and the codes that came up, there was a code for the battery, but there was, and there were codes for wheel speed, speed sensors, which is why they were recommending the hubs. But there was also a, a code for engine fail to start. Um, and so what happened to this customer, and this was what I explained to him when I saw the code, I said, what happened is you were driving the car and your engine stalled. So once your engine stalled, then you drive on the hybrid battery. But unlike a regular car, the, the hybrid battery will only go by itself for about a quarter of to a half a mile. There's not a lot of power in it. So it's more of a conduit uh, to, to send the power to the other components as opposed to a huge storage of, of power. So once, once he drained down, he basically he, he drained the battery down and then it stalled. And then the car had to be put over to the side of the road. So what the dealership um, that had sent over the codes, I told them, you probably want to call them back and tell them that they need to fix this engine problem, because if we put another battery in it and you have an, an engine stalled problem, all you're going to do is damage the battery that we put in it. Um, so he called back down to the dealer. Dealer said, absolutely not. It needs a battery and it needs, you know, these two wheel speed sensors. So he called me back and said, Aaron, what, if this was your car, what would you do? And I said, sir, this is what I do. I would take it to a different dealership. That's what I would do. And he said, here's what I would do. Call the call the other dealership, get a service advisor on the phone. And if he wants to talk to me, I'll be happy to talk to him because I've got, I have the knowledge, I can share it with him. So I talked to that guy at the dealership and said, here's what happened. It stalled while he was driving down the road. Um, and then, you know, the ticket towed to this dealership. So the customer took it over to that dealership. Mechanic got the car, um, talked to the service advisor. He went to take a look at the car and he saw that the gas gauge was sitting at a half a tank. 
Okay. But he went and checked in the tank and there was no gas in the tank. So he went ahead down to the gas station and bought $10 of gas, stuck it in the car, started it up, cleared the codes, test drove the vehicle. Um, and then the, the battery code was still there. So he cleared it again two times. Um, and after he cleared it two times, the battery had charged back up and it was fine. Customer didn't need anything. All he had to do, he found out that he needed to replace the sending unit in his fuel tank because what had happened is the sending unit had gone bad and it was showing half a tank when it was actually out of gas. So he, he called back. He was so thankful that, that he didn't spend $6,000 with the dealership or he didn't spend, you know, for a hybrid battery with me. Um, that he'd recommended plenty more of his friends to, to come do business with us and, you know, and see us. But that was a, a fantastic story um, from early on in our, in our company that I've shared with almost every one of our sales teammates in the sense that we're always better off doing right by the customer, whichever way, you know, we, we can. Uh, the only thing that, that we do have to be cautious of is, is we let the customer know that we don't diagnose it. You know, we don't do it with a phone, but if they send us codes, we certainly can give them advice on it for sure. Uh -huh. Wow. And do, do you know if he took, took that resolution back to the first dealership and let them have it? He did. <clears throat> He did, but there wasn't anything they would they were going to do about it. So, you know, they, they wouldn't give him his money back on the diagnostic and they didn't, you know, they just had egg on their face. I mean, wow. you know, maybe, so yeah. Maybe contact the corporation. But, yep. Wow. Yeah. That's a we cool do find, story. yeah, we, we do find that dealerships and repair shops, um, we know that there are a lot of them that do fantastic work, fantastic job. They're, they're, they're awesome. I mean, they, they know what they're doing. We just, because the hybrid business is just such a small niche, you know, part of the overall automotive world, there's just not enough technicians out there that have a lot of experience with this stuff. And so a lot of them, if they see a code for the battery, just assume that it's the battery without really taking a look at those other codes and, and seeing the relationship and how the engine is kind of the main driver of charging the battery. And if it's not working properly, that, that is a huge issue and can damage your hybrid battery. And that's just a really important piece. Mm -hmm. for hybrid vehicles that's cool and it speaks highly of your the company's ethics and your ethics uh sure. you say you have another favorite story um i have a, a totally different one so we've had we had another customer that um and this is one, one of our bad reviews that you'll see um on yelp um uh, at whatever point but the, the the customer had bought a battery from us um and we had a problem with one of our batteries they called us up. We said, absolutely, we'll get somebody out to you. It was within a couple of days um, because unfortunately that battery was a Gen 2 Camry. And at the time we just didn't have a lot of them. So we, off we offered to, to send it back to them. Um, and when, when we went back out there um, to, to the customer, he was really mad. And he was really mad that, you know, that the battery um, was, was a problem and that it was so rushed. That's why he put up the review and all that stuff. Um, and so, after, after we got it back out there, though, and we, we fixed the, the problem, um, we went ahead and, you know, I, I had a personal conversation with him. My installer had a conversation with him. Um, and we just explained, unfortunately, sometimes these cells do take a dump after we, you know, put a, uh, after we test it. it. It's just unfortunate that it happens, but it does. Um, but the, he has a warranty with us. He has that stuff. He was just so happy that we had gotten out there so fast you know, and, and fixed his problem that he took down his review. He ended up posting a five-star review for us. He ended up, um, started recommending us to all his friends and all that stuff. And all it took from our perspective was just owning that it was our fault. Do you know what I mean? Being honest, saying mm -hmm. that, that we, that it was our fault that we had to, to move, you know, on to the next or, or get somebody out to him and help him. And then just taking a few extra calls, right. Just to, to make sure he's okay. And that, that he understands. And once he understood the, the fact that it is a reconditioned battery, it's not a brand new battery. So I, I know bad new, brand new batteries can have warranties too, but it's more likely on ours than it is theirs just because the components in our battery are eight to 14 years old. So mm -hmm. even though they go through a test, there's always going to be some potential for a warranty. We just, we strive to bring that number as low as possible, obviously, so that we, you know, can do the best we can for our customers. Right. Cool. You know, one thing I was thinking as you were talking sure. is that with all these varieties, uh, different brands and different models, uh, it's probably hard to have the battery in the, in the location that you need it. 
uh, yep. especially with some of the outliers. Probably Prius is not, since they're so prolific, not as right. big of a deal, but some of the That's other correct. outliers. So how do you deal with that? Are you having to constantly move batteries to different parts of the country? And are, are the drivers doing that? Or are you shipping them? How, how does that happen? Yeah, so what we have, um, each one of our installers across the, the company has a storage unit or has a small mini warehouse or whatever where the batteries are kept. Um, and we attempt to have all of the guys that those storage units have the majority of our batteries. So um, it you'll still find that some of the batteries that we have, the, the Lexus HS250H comes to mind immediately because there were very few of them ever made. Um, so we have somewhere in, nation, in the range of about 12 inside the whole company, which means that we can't have them everywhere. But we also have um, rebuilding sites where we literally rebuild the batteries. And those are geographically placed and they're the ones that will have a company van that will bring the batteries out to each of those storage units. So if, uh, if a storage unit is missing any battery anywhere in the company, most of the time it can be built and then brought out to that storage unit at, from the, the warehouse. So usually within a couple of weeks, we'll have a trip going out that will schedule it to come out and drop other batteries. And then the installer can grab the battery he needs for that special appointment or that special battery. Um, but it does happen that, that we will have some that are two, three weeks out in order to get to them. But I would say that 95% of the batteries in, that, that are appointments that we get, we usually can handle within a day or two is the majority of what we do. Hmm. Yep, it's amazing. Uh, you just, you mentioned that you've recently been bought out and that's when sure. we contacted you. Yep. Um, what do you think the new owner saw in this uh, other than geographic growth, and that's probably plenty. Um, sure. What What does the new owner bring to the table for you, and uh, how are they going to help you improve what you already do? There are when, when when we're a small company like we were, and we were growing exponentially quickly. Um, obviously, there are, there are a lot of challenges involved, and so um, and there were. I mean, there were some headaches and things that we had to resolve, and things that we had to do. Um, one of the things that you have when you're a small company, though, and you're becoming a bigger company is you've got to grow up a little bit. You've got to get some more systems that can help your teams be more efficient and, and do things better. Um, what, when LKQ saw that you know, and went through um, our business and our business model and some of the things that we do, there were a lot of things to like because our growth was very high. I mean, they saw that right away. They saw that we were very efficient in what we had done, even though we used Google Suite and we used some inexpensive systems, we found a way to make those systems efficient and work for us. Um, they, they also saw the synergy with some of their other models. So they have some other companies that they purchased and some other, um, in fact, LKQ was a customer of, or a vendor of ours because we were purchasing cores from them to, to get extra batteries. So there was already a relationship kind of with LKQ before they even purchased us. Um, on the green bean side, now that we have LKQ on our side, we have um, they have a technical department, um, they have, you know, an accounting department, they have all sorts of things that we were literally one person does this, one person does that. And so they're able to provide a lot of help to us. Um, and they've been very fantastic ab about reaching out to us and saying, what can we do to help you guys? What, what can we do? So one of the things they're going to, they're helping work on is how do we, how do we get into the next batteries? How do we get into the Ford Escape? How do we get into the, um, you know, to the Nissan um, battery, or how do we get into the Hyundai Sonata or each of those other batteries that we're not in yet? Um, you, ha you have to have some resources and you have to have some, you know, some help with some technical experience that can go beyond what, we, what we've already had, you know, at this point. So, mm -hmm. but we're very excited to join their team. I mean, it's been, it's been a very good uh, transition so far. There's been meetings and there's some, some other challenges along with it, but it's been, it's been great so far. Mm. Um, let's, let's go ahead and project out into the future. Sure. Um, and, uh, just from my, from my perspective, lay perspective, uh, my guess is that, that it's mixed because on the one hand, you've got this new, um, this new bill, uh, transportation bill, infrastructure bill mm -hmm. that is going to, uh, give a significant amount of weight to supporting hybrids um, mm -hmm. so that's working in your favor on the other hand you've got tesla and other um ev manufacturers 
that are going to whittle away at eventually um, sure. at at the market. Now, for a while, uh, I mean, there's so many Priuses. I was one of the first ones to get a Prius. I think 03 might have been the first one. And then I got an 04. Um, and there weren't many on the road. But now, you know, they're they're prolific. So what do you guys see as the future? And is there a future for you beyond hybrids into EVs? So first thing, as far as the, the future, um, if we look just at 2020 and, and go look at what vehicles were sold, um, the, the RAV4 hybrid was the number one selling hybrid vehicle, you know, in, in 2020. And the amount of sales that were of the RAV4 that year, along with the, the Camry and a few other, other vehicles, um, still exceeded some of the ones that were sold, you know, back in 04, 05, 06. Um, now, the reason I bring that up is because what's unique, or at least unique to us, I guess, um, in that we can see the future of, of our sales just by looking at the sales of hybrid battery vehicles, right? So, so I see all these RAV4s that are sold, then I know that in 10 years, we're going to have at least this number of potential sales. Do you follow me? We can project yep. out based on the number of what we've, we've, we've sold and, and what we've, and, and the number of batteries that were, or hybrid vehicles that were 2004, et cetera. So we, we can see that 10 years in advance. That's the number one that's the number one point. The, the number two is while Tesla and some of these other manufacturers are switching over to other battery technology and to these long range batteries and, and lithium and all this other stuff, there is going to be, we have 10 years to really figure that out, right? Before it becomes a, a thing. Right now, Tesla's not going to let us jump into their battery business. Um, so they've not opened it up to allow that. Um, some of the other lithium battery or battery companies that have lithium, um, we've been able to look at and see if we can come up with solutions for the future. So we may jump into the lithium and jump into those other, that technology and be able to offer those over the next five to 10 years. Um, if, they, if, the, if the whole business goes one way, though, we have other options. We don't have to stay just in this business. We can, we can shift to other models and use our, uh, our mobile installation team to, to shift into other models. But right now, we can easily see 10 years right mm -hmm. so we know that in 10 years we're still going to have lots of hybrid batteries to sell um we, and, and all we have to do is just keep watching the sale of the of the hybrid vehicles that contain the nickel hydride batteries that we currently are in mm -hmm. makes sense <clears throat> yeah and you know people i don't remember exactly the length but people are keeping their vehicles a lot longer sure um, i want to say seven years average i don't know if that's Accurate. I think it's longer than that. I, th I think the average is actually longer than seven. Um, I think it's closer to 10 or 11 um, is, is where the average is. But I think that the, the automotive industry has always a, been a unique industry for the market because if you, if you were in, and this includes green bean, but if you're, if you're not a new part, if you're a remanufactured part, or let's say you're a repair shop, but you're not the dealer. Okay, so you're that next level repair shop down. So if you're in a, in a, a market where the economy really struggles and it's in really bad shape, you tend to find more people that want to hang onto their cars, right? So they tend to get those older cars fixed rather than go and buy that brand new car. Um, but you also find in the newer economy, when people go out to buy more cars, you also find some other people that now have more money on the lower end that sometimes are able to, to come in and get repairs done because they're, they're more confident in, in repairing that car now that the economy is going good. So we want to keep the car going. So you tend to see a, what I call a net zero. Um, the economy plays a net zero impact on your, your automotive repair business when you're in our range or their range. Even when the economy took a big dump last in 2020, we had a one week where everything dropped, where everybody was trying to figure everything out. And then we started having explosive sales after that. People, people were saying, well, shoot, I don't know what's going to happen with the economy, but I better get this hybrid battery fixed and, you know, and, and get back that car back on the road because I don't want to be stuck. And so, so we saw that, that it doesn't play you know, a lot. So we see a lot of those things with the future, though. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine that hybrid car owners, because, just because of the mindset that goes along mm -hmm. with it, they're going to be more likely to want to keep their car and to repurpose the, the battery and, and give sure. it more life. Yeah. I would imagine. Give, 
yeah, give that battery more life, give it, keep it going, keep the car going. You know, it, it doesn't, um, you don't have to go buy a brand new car when that car can keep running. And we, we certainly see customers that have 300,000 miles on their cars. We see them, we see that routinely. Uh, we see plenty of customers that have had five, six, 700 on some of their cars. It's been, now those are rare, but it's <laughs> crazy when you see the, the technician send that in, this car's got 700 and X thousand, <laughs> you know, thousand miles on it. It's just crazy. But we, but some people absolutely that still own their, they love their cars and they want to keep them. Or, or like in your case, where you're giving it to your grandson, we hear that all the time. We have lots of customers that want to give it to their daughter or their son or their, or their grandson or granddaughter or niece or nephew. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine that uh, one of the biggest challenges is marketing and getting the word out because, you know, and, and even uh, I would imagine a significant percentage of hybrid owners don't know about this possibility. So what mm -hmm. are you guys doing? And is this new company helping to get the word out? What's the best way to educate the, the public? When we started uh, real early in, in 16 and 17 uh, and created our website, um, there, Google always um, has you know, search ranks. Right. So on customer service, they have a whole bunch of things that go into how you rank on a, on a website when you search for it. Um, but Green Bean very early on was able to start to get at the top of those search results um, and, and part of its ads. So, you know, we, we did ads on Google and that's part of our marketing budget. And that's where we started and where we've continued all the way up till now. Um, we don't fit very well with TV, radio um, and some of the others simply because the cost is so is so expensive and we're just so small in comparison to to, to that coverage um so w to give you an, a small example though you know we have we cover oklahoma we cover kansas we cover missouri we cover these states and they're big states you know they have lots of area but we might only do two installs in oklahoma this week next week it might be 10 but it's still it's it's a low overall number that if you were to drive um green bean, you know, on the TV in say Indianapolis or something like that, it just, it won't hit enough people to, to, to really justify the, the expense just because yeah. we're not big enough to do that yet. Um, I mean, maybe hybrids later on. Are, hybrids yes. are still a niche. Yeah, right. exactly. If, it, if we were, if we were a much bigger part of the market, I think there would be room for that, but there just isn't yet. So for us, Google has always been the number one place. Cause when you go to the, the dealer and you get this big expense, the first thing you do, if you want to look for an alternative is you go to Google, right? You go search where, what, what other company can I get a hybrid battery from? And, and that's where we pop up and then they have an opportunity to see us. Mm -hmm. But I bet there's a significant number of people who go to the dealer they're not going to spend that kind of money. Yep. And then I bet they stop. Um, yes. Do you, do you have a, uh, a network of auto repair shops that maybe you can get flyers in or mm -hmm. communicate with, or is that, are there too many of them uh, to even reach out to them? Yeah, I don't know if it's too many, um, but there we, we have relationships right now with some dealers across the country. Um, we have some relationships with auto repair shops around the country, um, and they are very good about getting hybrid vehicles in and then calling us if it needs a battery. And they even sometimes call us for advice if they have other problems with the hybrid vehicle they're not too familiar with. Uh, but we are that's one of the, the biggest, um, with LKQ coming on board, they have a much bigger breadth for reaching out to some of those shops and dealers than what Green Bean did. So mm -hmm. at, at the time, and that that's one of the things that we might start seeing in the next couple of years is some of the partnerships with some of the either the part stores like Advance or AutoZone or um, you know some of those, or it could be the the repair shops, um, Meineke or maybe some of the others. But it could, it could be or dealers. We, there's a dealer network that we're currently servicing three dealers out of a huge dealer network. At some point, maybe, you know, we get more breadth inside those, those overall dealerships inside their network. Mm -hmm. Maybe cut them in a small part, but you, mm -hmm. you don't have a whole lot of, of uh, markup on your vehicles. Anyway, right. um, pardon me, that's the marketer okay. coming out in me. I hear you. <sighs> um, and uh, one other thing about Tesla's, uh, in the very early on, I heard, and it may have just been scuttlebutt, but that they had some interest in being able to have the battery pack, uh, have you be able to drive in 
drop the battery pack and put it, put a new one in there. Um, mm-hmm. Sort of like a rechargeable drill or something. Yep. Um, so if that technology uh, can be brought on, then that could be, that could be something, you know, to, to have that, that uh, replacement, instant replacement. Um, yeah, for sure. They, they, they talked about that for a while. Um, I don't think that's going to work long term, though. I, I think they're, they have started to figure out um, how to charge that, um, the Tesla batteries much quicker. And once they figure out how to do that quicker, the, the time that it takes to drop that battery and then install that new one and then test drive it and make sure it's in good shape or all those little extra things that you got to do when you do that kind of work. Um, you'd be better if you can charge it fully within 15, 20 minutes, you're probably going to be still better off with the, yeah. with the charging method. So I, I believe that it's going to still go that way um, as opposed to the drop way. But, but if, if they go that way, th- then we've got a team of people that are already out there doing this kind of work. We, we certainly would be a good fit for them if that happened. Mm-hmm. And they're talking about a million mile battery for yeah. the, for the cyber truck and, and others. So, um, well, I feel like we've really talked a lot around uh, around this business. And of course, the, the business model fascinates me. And I certainly support you guys and want to want to get word out uh, about you. Are, the, are there any things that uh, we haven't talked about that I didn't ask about that you'd like to to share about the company or the product or anything? Um, the only... I don't have anything specific, but I just, maybe I'll say one, one quick thing. Um, so even though, you know, LKQ's come on board um, with us and kind of taken, taken us over, they have still allowed us to kind of keep the customer centric, you know, model that we've kind of enjoyed for the last five years. And it, it has always been our commitment uh, to the customer that's been allowed us to have the success that we have. But part of that is a thank you to all of our customers too, because they've, they've taken, you know, the time to, to reach out to us and schedule these appointments. And without those customers, obviously we wouldn't be around. So, so if anybody is on this or hears this podcast, though, it's been a customer of us, please reach out to us because we, we very much appreciate your business and everything that you've done for Green Bean. Yep. And uh, as a former customer and maybe a future customer, since I have more <laughs> Priuses, um, uh, the customer service really did stand out. Um, especially the communication, you know, where yep. uh, it's going to be two o'clock instead of 11 o'clock or, you know, it was very, very prompt uh, communication and, uh, and very sympathetic. And that's what people need at a time like that. <laughs> Thank you for that, Mark. Greatly appreciate it. So uh, how, do, how do we get in touch with you? Uh, give us a website, uh, any numbers, Sure. Uh, any, anything so that people can get in touch. Perfect. Best way to reach us is you can check our website out at www.greenbeanbattery.com. Um, that's that goes straight to our website. Um, you can take a look at all the different batteries that we offer. There's a warranty tab to go co that'll cover all the warranty terms and 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 stuff like that. And then if you want to reach out to us, um, 888-473 seven, two, six, five option. One will lead you straight to the sales team. You can talk to them about purchasing the battery from us and option two will take you to the customer service team. And we can certainly help answer any questions that you have about the hybrid batteries or whether the codes relate to the battery and et cetera. And you're willing to go above and beyond like you did for the guy that didn't need a green beam battery. Exactly. Right. So, all right. Well, um, thank you so much for being on the podcast. We, we've really been uh, aching to get the word out about you. Um, well, thank you. And, and the, the synergy with Thrive and what we're trying to do um, is strong. And uh, we certainly will, will keep the word spinning uh, when we get our facility up and running. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank, and thanks for what you do. And thanks for your passion for, for what you're doing. Um, it's pretty clear that you really are enthused and, and care about what you do. And I think it's, especially in this day and age, it's really important and it, and it stands out. Mark, thank you for, very much for those kind words and also for just taking the time to reach out to us to, to, to have this little session today. I appreciate you. Great. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Uh, you see, we, we hit a variety of topics from 
C former CIA agent to green bean batteries. <laughs> uh, so keep tuning in. And uh, if you have uh, want to look further into our concept, go to thrivecolivingcommunities.org. And there are many ways that you can support us. And here they are. Thanks for joining us for another great episode of the Thrive Co-Living Communities YouTube podcast. To learn more about our mission and how you can support our vision of creating co-living communities worldwide, please visit us at thrivecolivingcommunities.org. To receive advanced viewings of our podcast and other exclusive content, find us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Thrive Co-Living Communities. You can also learn more ways to support our mission in the show notes below. Amazon Smile, GoFundMe, Kroger, and our own Thrive Gear store, where you can buy t-shirts, hats, and many other items. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon.